Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today with a little bit of a different video, an unboxing of this awesome new spinning wheel um, that I've just gotten from a Kickstarter that I supported. This is the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 2 um, that was created by Maurice Ripple of um, Dreaming Robots. So this is the second um, electric eel wheel that I've purchased. Um, and I'm really excited because these are so much fun. These are just kind of like, like I have a lot of spinning wheels because I'm very, <clears throat> you know, into spinning. I've spun sort of professionally. I've, you know, I sell my yarn. I, um, teach classes, all those kind of things that I've done in the past. So that looks like everything from the box. So let's get the box out of the way. So these are really great wheels for beginners people who are looking to get into spinning um just to spin you know yarn that is um <clears throat> not super bulky like the yarn that i spin but you know still to be able to spin yarn so you'll see that the guides are here to this is how thick your yarn can get the bobbins are quite little but also super functional so um it has four rubber uh, feet. You saw me just put one on. They come on and off quite easily, which is nice because you can also screw this onto a surface like a block of wood. Um, so that's the engineering behind that. Um, so let's take a look at all the parts here and then I will look at the user manual. So here we have the power cable. I will put that together. So it looks like we have a USB and a mini USB, the, the old style one, I think, the A. <clears throat> and that might be what connects into the wheel itself. Let me double check. Yeah, it is. Okay. So this goes in here. And there's the switch. Then undo this cable here. There we go. Then this will plug into here, I assume. Yes, like so. Perfect. Then this will go into here. <coughs> and we have a nice long cable. So I'll plug it in in just a moment. But let's just set it aside. These are all of the bobbins. You get a set of six bobbins that are very easy to put together. They're all 3D printed bobbins, so they're really cute. Um, I really love the colors that they've chosen for, for these bobbins. I'll quickly put one together. Notice that I haven't even looked at the instructions yet and it's already like, okay, I know what to do. I love things like that. And it's not because I don't like reading instruction manuals, but really, yes, it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just put this together. We okay. Very cute. Now let's grab the manual here because there's some other things. It looks like we have some extra. We have an extra belt. We have extra guides. Those little yarn guides. The plastic bits here. And this is um belts. Two extra belts. So this one is for this the the drive band belt and then this one is the tension guide and this is actually just elastic not very different than the elastic that we were all buying for masks but it's black in color okay and then we get a few things so he sends a spin card with the s twist and z twist and the ratios and then a wpi card which is your wraps per inch for the thickness of the yarn that you want to um, go ahead and spin so here's a little bit of information um, about this e-spinner this is an electric spinner if i haven't said that already dreamingrobots.com i can tell you from prior experience with dealing with um dreaming robots um and maurice in general that he's really great i mean he really does um strive to make accessible spinning equipment for the yarn spinning community he's very supportive i haven't had any kinds of customer service issues or tech issues that i had to go to him about but i do see him um <clears throat> dealing with you know 
everything like that happens, you know, in owning a business on his Facebook group and also through his newsletter and his Kickstarter updates. He's very communicative, um, responsible, like on time and, you know, genuinely interested in taking care of his customers that are like, you know, financing his um, ingenuity, right? So he's very creative and very cool. So electric eel wheel nano two user manu manual. Um, the ultra portable e-spinner. So this is your safety information and your parts list. So let's just look at our parts list. So one base, yes, one flyer, one USB power cord, three bobbin tubes, six bobbin discs, um, an orifice reducer. Um, what is the orifice reducer? Let me think about that. This maybe, this is the orifice. <clears throat> Potentially that's what these are, but I thought those were those. I have to look at that. I have to look at, oh, here we go. Yes, orifice reducer. Oh, it's this blue thing. <laughs> There's pictures, oh, uh, duh. All right, um, an orifice hook. Yes, that's right here. And this is magnetic, so you don't lose it. A drive belt and a spin card, yes everything is there. And so, you know, if you're not familiar with these terms, right, he shows you what they are. So you're like, what is the flyer? This is the flyer. What is the sliding hook? This is the sliding hook. What's the purpose of a sliding hook? Well, when you're spinning yarn, you're filling up the bobbin. So you can slide these up and down, you know, to guide where you want your yarn to wrap on your bobbin. Then this is your bobbin. Your tension dial is here. So see this string comes over this little bobbin here. It, it goes into this groove and you can tighten it and loosen it. And what that controls is what we call tension. It's how um, when you're feeding your yarn uh, your or your wool into yarn, into your orifice, um, it's going to, when you tighten it, it's gonna pull it harder from you. And when you loosen it, it's gonna let up that tension a little bit. And then the tension switch, um, we have the Z and the S, the twist stitch rather, um, we have the Z and the S. So you're going to be spinning an S and plying with a Z. So spinning is when you're just spinning your yarn. Plying is when you're putting two yarns together or you're wrapping a yarn with like a thread of some kind um, to set that twist to, to have a balanced yarn. Um, then the, okay, we've got that, the twist switch is this no this is the tension dial twist switch okay oh and the speed dial sorry so this is the speed so you turn this up all the way if you want the wheel to really really whip and then back down if you want it to go slower usb power cord okay that's all the things so then the initial setup when you receive your eel wheel you need to spend a few minutes putting together some parts no tools are required for assembly thank you. Um, so yeah, he just shows you all the pieces, how to put it together, but I actually didn't have to do that. It was already together. So that's great. Um, so he says, first assemble the bobbins, screw the bobbin discs onto the bobbin tubes. Next slide a bobbin onto the flyer. Um, you know, like he tells you like if everything were coming apart, like if you got it all apart, how to put it together. Um, and then the starting procedure is turning the speed dial on the side all the way counterclockwise to make sure that it starts at zero. So it's there. Plug the USB extension cord into the wall or into any 2A USB port. And the other end of the USB extension gets plugged into the USB switch. Um, so it shows you the breakdown of the cord and how to put it together. Uh -huh. And he tells you like basically slowly turn the speed dial clockwise to increase the speed of the flyer. And then how to adjust the uptake. So that's what I was saying about tension. And then he explains the Z and the S twist. How to thread the flyer. So that's how to get your, what we call a leader yarn onto your bobbin to start with. He gives you the instructions of basically like what holes to go in. And then how to adjust your flyer hooks, which are these, that little thing I was just telling you about. Um, and then how to change your bobbin. Um, and the orifice reducer is installed on the front of your flyer, 
When you spin thinner yarn, leave it in place to reduce the yarn's wobble as it moves through the orifice. For thicker yarn, remove it by sliding it out of the orifice. So this, that's this thing. Um, I have to learn about it maybe. Yeah, I think it's that thing. Or is it this thing? I'll look at it later. <laughs> I think, yeah, it is that thing. Clearly that's a picture of this. For thicker yarn, removing it by sliding it out of the orifice. Okay. I think it probably just pulls right out, but I'm going to just wait maybe until, uh, okay, orifice, orifice reducer. <laughs> I'm a little stumped with the orifice reducer. We didn't have that on the initial wheel. Um, for thinner yarn, da 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 da. Let me see if it has a different picture of the orifice reducer. I get very easily confused. I'm overly analytical about these things and so I'm like, are we sure that this is the right way? Orifice reducer. Hmm. I don't know if it's this itself, this plastic disc, or if it's not, because I don't want to pull it if it's not. Oy. Yeah, I'm going to just wait. <laughs> Try turning it on and we'll see. Okay. You know, I give you honest reviews of things, right? Okay, threading the flyer, adjusting the flyer hooks, changing the bobbins. We know how to do all of that already. I do anyways. Um, and then he gives you other resources. So like um, basically about powering and instructions and videos. They have a Ravelry group, a Facebook group, and then troubleshooting. Why does my wheel vibrate at higher speeds? Why won't my wheel start? So those are like your basic things and he gives you some troubleshooting options. So yeah, it's a really good little manual. Also very little, which is nice. And it's not made just of paper. So I'll actually be able to like keep it somewhere that makes sense. A little project bag. I'll probably just keep this all together in this bag, to be honest. I tend to keep all these things in like a little case, like a little vintage suitcase or something. So just give me a moment and I will plug this in and we will take a look at it and maybe I will thread the um, the bobbin. Okay I am back and I have taken the AC adapter off. I'm just plugging it in with the USB just because that's what's available in my um, my extension cord back there. So I'm just going to now pull my cord back out of the way of the wheel and then you just turn it on by flipping the switch. It was off. Now it's on. Then we turn this up. And then that's the S twist, and then we'll test the Z. Yeah, that's really cute. Oh my gosh, I love this wheel already. And it's actually not that loud, right? It's just kind of like a, a purr, really. Okay, sorry for the little interruption. I was just taking a bit of a breakfast break. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do now is go ahead and thread the flyer. So the instructions um, here to thread the flyer are a little tiny bit different than what I do, but not that different. So they tell you to tie a piece of yarn onto your bobbin disc, which is this, as shown, so that it can't slip. Um, you will use this yarn as a leader for your roving which is your wool or whatever fiber you're spinning. Um, and it says thread this lead yarn through the hooks on the flyer arms, then use the orifice hook to pull the leader out to the front of the wheel. Attach your spinning fiber to the lead yarn and you're ready to spin. Okay, so what he shows here is tying it sort of in this area. What I'm actually gonna do is I've got this long piece of yarn that I've doubled over and I'm going to just tie the two ends together as so. So now I have a, a big giant loop here and the reason is I like to do a slip knot around my bobbin rather than um, using um, just a tie because then I can pull tightly my slip knot okay and it reduces or it like it adds drag which is what you want when you get started so then you can wrap that around a couple of times as he's shown then you're going to go underneath your two loops here as he shows there <clears throat> 
And then this is where we need our little orifice hook because we're going to go right through this hole here. Just put your hook right through, grab onto your yarn and pull it on through. And there we go. That's through there. Um, then what's the next step to get it to here? Hold on. Have I done something incorrectly? So we've gone around here. We go through here. We go through this. Oh, I'm, I'm going the wrong direction. I'm sorry. So you do go into that loop. Let me just, let me back up a little. Okay. Go through here. Now you are going to enter this. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I'm not awake yet. Now you see my hook? Here it is. See, it's going in through the orifice reducer and then out through the hole there. Okay. So that's where you're going to grab it from. The reason I am confused most of the time or I have to do things twice is because I have so many spinning wheels and many of them operate differently, all on the same concept, just ever so slightly differently. Okay, so now we've got this here. Okay. Now you see that? It's fully threaded now. So now we can um, up our... Are we on? We are on Z. Let's just go to S. Actually, no, I want to, you know what it is? I think I'm confusing S and Z twist. Yes, because, you know, S says spin, right? But it's actually the other way around. We want to spin on a Z twist. <laughs> Sorry, my brain. Okay, now see how this yarn is going in. This is right where we want to figure out the tension and the speed that works for us. And I just do that just by playing a little bit to see how it's going to go. Do I need less or more tension? And then I'll, I usually spin with a lot of tension. That's just how I am. Um, okay, now I'll let the twists kind of wrangle back out of this again so that my leader's not over twisted. Because <laughs> this is just my test, right? So you just want to let your leader untwist a bit and then you can put it right back on again. I turned that up too high. There we go. Okay. And I think that feels good to me in terms of the speed and the tension. So now let's get the wool. Um, just pull this out a bit. And I'm just going to use my little hook to hold on to it for a second. Um, will I grab my bat of wool? So I just twisted this out on my drum carter. Um, it's just different random wools and that's what I'm going to use. So I get started by just kind of grabbing a little bit of wool here. This is like a good, you know, little hank of um, wool to get you started. So then grab your leader. Another reason that I like my method of having this, this loop here rather than just a thread is that you're not just adding on to a thread, you actually have a nice little loop that you can add on to. And I think I mostly feel good about that because it's how I've taught some other people to spin. It just gives you like this, you know, connection so that it doesn't keep slipping off when you're getting started. Okay, so let's turn this back on. And this is where we're going to test how the twist and if it's pulling. So right now I feel like I don't have quite enough tension. It's over twisting slightly. I want it to pull a little harder from me. So I'm going to stop it for a moment and I'm going to increase my tension by turning this knob. Um, now I'm just going to, so that I don't over twist this yarn because I know that my tension wasn't enough. I'm actually spinning quite thick as well. So um, yeah, let's just kind of hand wind this so that I don't over twist it too much. And I'll try to get a little thinner here as well. Okay. So I'm not immune to doing this kind of hand winding. One thing about the kind of spinning that I do, which is art yarn spinning, is that um, you end up having to do a lot of hand winding just because a lot of the texture techniques that I use or things that I add into my yarns, they can be a little bit persnickety getting through even the biggest bobbins. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's just turn this back on. 
Let's see if that tension increase will help me. Yeah, it seems to. I still think I need a little more though. There we go, actually, I'm okay now. Okay, so you see, we're still over twisting a little bit, um, which tells me maybe a little more tension. Yeah, that's probably a little better. If you see that it's corkscrewing as it's going into the orifice, that means that you're slightly over twisting. So, yeah, we're still over twisting. I need a little more speed, maybe. No. Sometimes, usually you reduce speed to get rid of over twist, which is how this is working. But I'm finding, let me just double check my, yeah, we're good. There. I think I just need a little more tension. All right, let's wind again, just to not over twist too much on this yarn. Let's get it on there. Whoops. <laughs> Don't carry the whole wool in there. Okay. This is what your yarn is supposed to look like when you're testing out a new wheel. The truth of the matter is any kind of like, you know, a first timer's review of any kind of a wheel, even if it's an experienced spinner, is probably not going to be your best judgment of how something works. Um, because, you know, just like I'm doing right now, it's the very first time using this, right? So, yeah. Okay, let's get started again. I can reduce my speed a bit. Hmm. I'm trying to understand why. Oh, I wrapped on the wrong side. Okay, I think I know what the problem was there. I um, was on the wrong side of the bobbin somehow. Let's just take a look. This is dragging strangely. Hold on. I think I know what the problem is. I'm on the underside of the bobbin and I should be on the top. Okay. Also, let me double check if this is going the right direction. Yes. No, this should not be that way. Let's just break this and start again here. Okay, so this should go up here, up here. I don't know what I did. I, you know, I'm trying to film a video, so brain, my brain's fully off at the moment. <laughs> okay, let's, let's just play with this, pull it through. These are the kind of videos that I think are good though, because, um, you know, people can see the things that they can do wrong and then have to adjust when they're learning. Okay, yes, this all feels good now. Okay, let's try. Need a little more speed than that. There we go. Okay, so this is working now as intended. So see, it just took a moment to kind of work out the tension the speed and the settings that we're looking to have set and I like to make these kind of videos that show you these these beginner experiences like when you pull something out of a box that you've never used before um, what happens so I have the original my original eel wheel the first one um, and I have not really used it a whole lot because to be quite honest a lot of my spinning is production spinning and it's um for bulkier weight yarns and this wheel is not designed for that but this wheel I can tell you is great for a beginner and it's also just great like if you like to knit socks or you like to spin thinner yarns or you you need a relaxing hobby that just takes you into a mode where you can focus on something this is your wheel it's a great entry-level wheel and um, yeah I really like it 
feel very much in the zone now. I could probably sit here for a long time and just do this. It's really nice. What I can recommend though is moistening the suction cups a little bit because you'll see on my desk that it's kind of moving around a bit. Um, and that is because of the suction cups not being stuck. So see, so you might want to um, moisten them or um, um, put it on a surface and stick it down first or actually screw it down to something if you want to have it in a permanent position. Like if you have one thing you can do that's really fun with these is just buy like a little thrifted table, like a little end table and you can screw it right down on it or on a block of wood or you know whatever you want. I'm just winding because we've got some locks in here and locks are a little challenging for um, these little wheels. So now I'm going to take it off this hook and I'm going to fill up this area of the bobbin a little bit. So just kind of wind and get the rest of those locks in there. There we go. Tiny baby orifices like this are not designed to handle um, super bulky bulky yarn as this piece of the yarn is going to be because it's a, a fully intact like lo lock so it's lumpy bumpy. Um, a lot of the wool that I card, I specifically, whoops, I specifically keep the lock um, intact because I want the curl in my yarn. But when you're spinning a finer yarn, like something you would knit, you know, socks or like um, a fingering or a lace weight project, you don't want to use, you know, a wool like that. You'd want to use a more of a trained fiber like a roving or something of that nature. Let's just get this lofty bit through here okay and we're back okay and we still have a little bit stuck in there I think yeah <laughs> so cute yeah so it's a little nice on the go wheel you can use these in the car um, you can use them on a plane um, because there is a USB so yeah, super fun. So in just this short amount of time, I've got like a nice little amount of yarn there. And you know, if you're not into spinning for the purposes of like knitting, crochet, weaving, if you're looking for a way to just make some beautiful um, yarn to use, even in journals, this is a nice little introduction kind of machine that you don't have to spend too much money on um, to be able to create nice little yarns for like journal tag toppers etc um so yeah i'm i'm really happy with this it's really cute so i guess what i'll do now is i'll find I'll, I'll look at here and see how to remove my bobbin so you remove the tension string from the bobbin so that's this this is the elastic -y one and you remove the drive belt from the drive belt groove on the flyer that's this one so we'll just put those over here and then lift off the flyer and remove its bearing. So this is this, and I assume this is the bearing, yes. Um, and then slide the bobbin off the flyer, and then you put on a new bobbin by reversing the steps. So on with the flyer, on with the bobbin, drop it in, replace your tension on here, and your drive band on the bobbin in the groove and voila so now let's just take a moment so I would normally like put this on a nitty naughty machine um, machine not a machine but like um, a nitty naughty is sort of like you you can create a skein that way in a bit of a figure eight motion but I'm just going to hand wind this little bit of yarn into a bit of a, bit of a little ball here um, and show it to you Oops, that's my alarm. One moment. It's buried under my wool over here. So you'll see in not much time at all and in a bit of a mishmash of like it working versus not working, we got this nice little amount of yarn and this would um, Oops, let's not take our leader. Um, this would be a good topper for several tags. So I typically, when I break my yarn, I just kind of, I don't usually cut it, but I'm going to right now just for quick factor. Um, I'll tie a knot at the end. 
as so. I'll just pull that excess away from having cut it. it. It'll never have that nice organic shape. So yeah, now we have yarn that we could use as a tag topper. Um, and you can now take it and you can let it twist around itself if you want to. Um, you could also ply this now. So this is the act of plying. You can now go in the S twist direction and you can let it ply. But what I'd recommend is just, if you're using it for journaling, um, for a, a yarn for your journal, you can just cut it after it's been hand plied and look right there, you've got a beautiful topper for a tag. So maybe we'll make a quick little tag and we will use it here. So let me grab a book page and we'll tear it into a tag. Okay, just a little tag. And I could probably stand to just even this out a bit. There we go. Now we'll get some scraps and we will cover the surface up. This is just from my scrap bin. It's just an inked piece of paper. Okay, so now we have a nice base to use here. Um, and then I think I'm trying to go through some scraps on my desk. So I've got this bin of scrappy things um, that I would like to try to use a little bit. So let's take a piece of this eco printed fabric and maybe a piece of this book spine. And just grab my fabric tack here. better. I need to refill this bottle of glue. <laughs> That's why it's so slow coming out. There we go. We'll just plug that there and that gives us kind of a nice background. Now what do I have that I could use here? Could use this little snippet of an owl. Maybe we'll do that. Okay, so let's just tear around this and make this like the focal point. So we've got a feather. We have a little burrowing owl. Can I tear it? <laughs> it's a little close. It's a little close. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Mm, no, that won't work. Hold on, let me get an actual good focal point for this. Scraps, scraps. Let's see what we have in here. Hmm, we have a little boy. And he's adorable. Let's plunk him there then maybe he could become a fairy boy make him a little fairy boy we need to cut those though because they're too little so let's just grab a couple more elements this this and maybe this little clock yeah that should be good i think that's good oh hold on what's this is this a fish so if you can hear my dog barking it's time for his walk and he's just like let's do this it's a whale now we don't need a whale. Um, 
hold on I've got a couple I've got this little butterfly here with the writing on it that's what I wanted okay so now let's get going on our collage in here so first we'll cut this in half I'll remove the antenna then we'll just take a bit of our glitter glue one wing two wings and then we'll glue him down you can go about there Then we'll take another little butterfly here. And then the butterfly with all this lovely old text on it, all this handwriting. Maybe there. My dog <laughs> is being so impatient upstairs. Oh my goodness husband's trying to put his boots on to get the dog outside and he's just like let's go let's go and maybe this here okay so we're just going to make a quick 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 tag right so now what we do is we cover up the back here okay let's get some scrap paper it doesn't exactly fit, but that's okay, we can trim it. Now we're going to just cut the excess of the backing paper here. And then we'll trim this into a tag shape. There we go. And just look at the back and remove any excess. There we go. So now we have the tag. So next stage is to take a little, um, a little punch. And I like using this little slot type punch and you just go up here and pop your little slot in there. And then you're just going to do like I showed you before a slip knot, just like with the leader of the yarn, plunk it in, pull the yarn up. And then I just tie one more knot to just kind of secure it. And then you can just take a look at how much you want. If that's too long, you can trim it. I usually trim it to about, say here. Um, oops, these are terrible scissors. Do not use these kind of scissors to cut wool. <laughs> use fabric scissors. But yeah, now we have our little tag topper. So there you go. That is my kind of unofficial review and unboxing in sort of a beginner style um, quickie for the Eel Wheel Nano 2 from DreamingRobots.com. If you're interested in that wheel, uh, I am not sponsored, but you know, let Maurice know that I sent you so that <laughs> you know he can see that um, I definitely am happy with my purchase and that I'm happy with his products in general. And I'm really happy to just support what he's doing because I really love um, the accessibility of this and how it kind of makes it possible for anybody to learn to spin for any reason and I think it also might really serve to get more people interested in spinning people who don't even knit or crochet um, you know like I like I'm using it here right this opens up a whole new world for people who are making mixed media art so um, that's it I think for now so if you're interested in this little eel wheel definitely check out dreaming robots I am planning to play with it a little bit more and have some fun um, so thanks for joining me and I hope you have a great day bye for now